Hey everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back. Today is day five. I'm going to run out of ways to do that um, now that it's day five. And today I decided I'm going to make a pink heart. Um, I should clarify. Day five of the 100 day project of which I have chosen to make stitched hearts. There we go. That's much clearer, right? I had originally, um, ow, stabbed myself already, first stitch. I had originally um, tore this five inch square fabric in half. Well, more like two thirds and a third or something like that. Anyway, then I was kicking myself because I really like this as a background fabric. But when I tried to piece the two pieces together, I was not happy. So, um, I'm just using one of the other pink fabrics. I have not done pink yet. This will be my first pink, which is cool. I'm good with that. So, I hope this finds everybody well. I was able to, when I went downstairs looking for some plain pink, because I hadn't brought any up with me, I was able to find some in a bin of very, <laughs> very, old fabric. I mean, this might be from, I don't know, the 80s? Who knows? Of which some of my fabric is. Uh, but I also found a ball of pink crochet thread. And I thought, hee hee hee, something other than white. Does that make it not the same? Eh, that's okay. I'm cool with that. In case you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a, a rebel. I went on uh, Instagram yesterday. And, well, last night when I couldn't sleep. And I was looking for the uh, hashtag for 100 Day Project 2023. And almost everybody there was an artist of the sort that draws and paints and sketches and, you know, that kind of art, as opposed to hand art uh, or this kind of thing. There was, I think there was a collage lady in there. After going through, I don't know, a hundred of them, <laughs> I decided that I would probably be better off going to sleep. So there was that. Um, and I bet I thought about doing this in embroidery thread. I bet the embroidery thread would be a lot easier to put through my fabric. But, you know, I'm always up for a little bit of a challenge. <clears throat> as long as no one else is dictating it to me. <laughs> I'm very rebellious that way. I don't know where that comes from because as a child I was extremely shy. I probably should have chosen, I was looking for a thinner needle, but honestly I bend these needles because I grip them so tight and I'm not sure that's really a good thing. So when I run out of this thread, I will choose a thicker needle since this thread is a little thicker. And I'm trying not to get this to gather. Yeah, our, our, our weather is so... I know I talk about the weather a lot, but, you know, what else is there to talk about when you stay home every day? Um, but our weather is insane. Yesterday, it didn't get out of the 30s, upper 30s, I don't think. And today, it's um, in the, it's going to be 60, but it's not going to be 60 until 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> but the sun is trying to come out. That's a good thing. I'm always for the sun. Just the sunshine gives me, puts me in such a better mood. Nope. I find it easier if I take the pins out. And then stab myself with the needle. Yay! Not. So 
So I thought I would just do this around the edge. And then today I'm gonna try the fly stitch, which I like doing, but I'm not always the best at it. My consistency, once again, is kind of all over the place with it. I'm trying to catch this little piece of fabric here. And I apologize for yesterday's video being off camera. Today, I'm actually working on my lap, <laughs> like my leggings. <laughs> these are my stay-at-home leggings. I don't wear these out in public. Um, so no jiggling of the camera unless I hit it with my arm. No jiggling of the table, which looks like the camera is jiggling. And I'm working very hard to stay. I can see the camera. It's about mouth height for me right now. And um, so I can see what I'm doing. I can see if I'm staying in the shot. And I'm working very hard to not go off camera like I did yesterday a lot. And I really apologize for that. And yeah. It's not a perfect science, I'll tell you. I want to say thank you to those of you that are watching and stitching along. It makes me very, very excited. I don't know why, but to me, the most important thing for me is finding a community that wants to do what I want to do and encouraging people and just relaxing and having fun. Whoopsies. I know when I was uh, spinning and weaving, I belonged to a spinning and weaving guild. And the camaraderie is always fun. Although, because I'm sort of a rebel, um, I found some snobs in there. <laughs> but hey, you know. They appear everywhere, so I just didn't engage, which is the easiest way to keep yourself from being overthinking about whether you should fit into somebody else's mold. I, I don't fit into other people's molds very well, in case you never noticed that about me. I mean, I set up a a uh, challenge with uh ow dang that hurt went right under my nail um i set up a challenge with carol out in idaho and we had fun doing it but i stressed about it so bad and it was our challenge like it just it, that's ridiculous i don't know why why that happens to me but it does so there it is <laughs> There it is. So there. Got my little edge done. And like I've said in previous videos, I will probably end up doing more on these after they are completed. Um, but for these, this purpose and these videos, I am working on these like a base. Um, so depending on what the use will be later on, will depend on whether I make things to go on them. And, you know, that may become part of the series too. I did pick up my calendar today. <laughs> I, sh I probably should have done this before. And uh, I counted 100 days. And then I went back to make sure that I counted correctly. And of course, it's math. You know, counting is math. And I counted incorrectly. I skipped a day. How do you skip a day when you're looking straight at a paper calendar? So anyway, and I know I'm ADD. I, I haven't been diagnosed, but I know I am because while I'm trying to count days on a calendar, I'm thinking about other things like, ooh, how am I going to fit it into this part of the schedule? And ooh, how am I going to fit it into that? And how are we going to go do this if I'm doing this 100-day challenge? Well, I lost track, miscounted, skipped a day. Big old, and I have a big calendar. It's not like a little calendar. This is a big desk calendar. 
<laughs> it's a big block. How do you skip a day? Mm, well, if you're Martha, you skip a day while you're counting days. So anyway, it takes us to June 1st is the 100th day. If you started the same day I did, that's a long time. It is February 20 something or other. February 26th. And this is day five. So just think about that, June 1st. And that's when the hot weather begins for us here in Virginia. And again, we don't go much of anywhere or do much of anything. So dialing these up, you know, fancying them up or embellishing them or whatever word you choose would be, you know, maybe the second part of the challenge. Well, not challenge, project. I like project. Challenges mean that I have to overthink it. Projects means I can do whatever I want because it's my project. See, rebellious, what I tell you. So I think we're having success with me doing this on my lap. I can see what I'm doing. You can see what I'm doing. And this one's going to be a little sort of kind of embellished because I'm going to put this heart in the center or as close as I can get to it and um, do the fly stitch. So simple to put the pieces on. There's only two until I put that heart on, which makes the third piece. And, you know, keeping it simple is the key. But I thought, okay, I'm ready for a little bit of something different today. And I was going to do a circle. But then I thought, well, I'm going to do pink. And, you know, I knew I had this heart fabric. Ooh, oh, well, darn. Sorry. Threading the knee. Ooh. <laughs> that end is not going to go through that eye. There we go. Let's see. My husband was out. He just came back. So, yeah. Yay. Look at that. First shot. So, if the door is shut, he assumes I'm recording, but he did poke his head in to tell me he was leaving. I wasn't recording yet, so that was fine. It's all good. Okay. We got a little bit of bubbling there, but that, that's okay. It's fine. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. Trying to make these sturdy enough that if they were used for a patch and you wanted to wash and dry them, you can. The only thing about that is some of these fabrics are not pre-washed. So I'm not sure if that would shrink them up or not. This canvas fabric is pre-washed, so it's all wrinkled. So... And I have a load of wash in, and I hope <laughs> that Tony leaves it alone long enough. He tries to be helpful, but certain things don't go in the dryer, you know. And I'm hoping this video, I'm going to change needles while I'm doing this, because I'm going to have to go through three fa the blah, 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 fabrics. think that's really thick and really big but we'll see if it works it might be too big for this fabric I don't know don't want to leave giant holes a lot easier to thread um yeah come on 
and sunshine. You were trying for a minute there. Alrighty. So what's, what's, okay, here's the OCD. This is the center of the fabric. This is where I stitched. <laughs> this is not the center of the fabric. Oh, Martha, you're so conflicted. A conflicted girl. Okay, let's see. If I want to do the fly stitch, I always have to think about this because I go at it from the wrong way. Okay, I'm going to put a pin in this. Just to hold it in place. And then I have to think up, down, through. Okay, so I'm going to go up here. Pull this down. Down here. Oh, see? And then I want this to be like on the edge. I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself. I want that to be on the edge of that fabric. Pull it. And then back down. Hopefully, if this were washed and dried, oh, I didn't think about that. I wonder how unraveled this will come. Probably. I don't know if a fly stitch will keep that from unraveling or not. Well, we're gonna give it a shot. I <laughs> started, <laughs> might as well finish. Oh yeah, yeah, Martha. Should have thought about that first. I'm gonna try and make these fairly close together, which means they probably should have been smaller, but that's okay. You just come up next to the other V and overlap them, sort of, kind of. Golfers are out. Hopefully they all watch their language, <laughs> if you can hear them. <laughs> yes, some of the things we put up with. So my husband and I were talking about the house next door selling, which sold for way more than what we thought it would sell for. And it sold in nine days. And we have talked many times about moving from here, but it's where we would move to that has been the discussion. Like, we've both thought about going to Maine. We've both thought about going back to Rochester in New York, where we're from. But, you know, then you have the whole winter thing. And our winters, for the most part, are really mild here. I mean, there was a time, <laughs> I don't know, 11, 12 years ago maybe it was. I don't know, seven, eight years ago. I can't remember for sure. And we were living on our little farm that we had, our five and a half acre farm. And um, we had like nine feet of snow in a matter of, it snowed like every other week from January to February. That was rough, but we had a farm, we had horses, we had to take care of everything, and we had a tractor, so we got her done. Well, Tony got her done. I wasn't a whole lot of help, but um, yeah, so, you know, Maine and New York are rough, very rough in the winter, and it can be hot and humid here in the summer, but they're worse, I think. Maybe not as hot, but the humidity in New York can be really rough. 
So, I don't know. And, sure, you can sell your house for, you know, if you look on Zillow, it says we can sell our house for 459000 <laughs> I don't see that happening. Mostly because we have areas in our home that need to be uh, remodeled, like the kitchen and the bathrooms. But we're not putting the money into that. So my ideal would be, well, I have two ideals. I There is a 55 plus community, two of them that I would like to move into, but one of them, the HOA, is way expensive. Way expensive. But the homes are newer. The other one, the homes are older, but way less expensive, but same amenities. And the HOA is less expensive in the older one. The homeowners association fee. I don't think people in Europe have that. Um, it's an extra fee for... A management company to hire snow plows and uh, landscapers and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, um, and they're a little bit, maybe 40 to 45 minutes, possibly closer to Northern Virginia, which is where. I get my medical care and stuff, so, and the amenities there we would use a whole lot more than we would here, but again, they're getting way more for those homes than they were, say, five years ago. Like, almost a hundred, um, between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars more for those homes, which means if there's a crash in the real estate market, which people are saying there will be, those home values will go down. And we we would be paying a lot more for those homes than what they're worth. However, we'd also be getting more than what we get out of this place where we do play, pay a homeowner's association fee, but we don't use any of the amenities. We don't use the golf course. Tony would love to golf, but his back is bad, which was made worse by the health issue he had uh, in 2021 in spring. This may take me all day to do this since I'm doing them so close together. I would have been better doing a blanket stitch or something, but hey, we're doing it. So anyway, we don't use any of the amenities here. We, the, if you want to use the gym, it's extra. It's not extra in the 55 plus place. I'm going to untangle my thread. See how much it spins? After you go in and out a bunch of times, your thread twists because you're constantly turning it. And I find that if I untwist it, I have better luck with it not tangling, knotting, etc. So, um, I have wanted to move into that 55 plus community for years. When we moved here, I wanted to move into that 55 plus community. So, I don't know. Convincing Tony is a whole nother subject. And those homes don't come open for sale very often. So, there's that. I think I'm staying on screen. I've been concentrating on this fly stitch, so hopefully... But I'm sort of trying to keep this in one place. On <laughs> I know lifting it up and moving it around a lot makes you dizzy too. So I can't help that. I apologize for it. But I can't help it. It's part of sewing.
It's a really easy stitch with a whole different effect to it, so that's why it's a nice stitch to do. So tell me what project you're working on today. Christine, thank you for commenting. Um, I have to catch up with your videos of the Roxy Down the Garden Path Challenge. You're doing beautiful work. Uh oh, that has to be down there. <laughs> See, distractions. And I did write to you about uh, the camera discussion, the GoPro camera discussion we had at one point. But thank you for including me in your watch list and stitching along, even though you're not doing the 100 day challenge or the, I mean the 100 day project. Oh, Martha, come on, get it right. I'm gonna say it wrong until the 100th day of it. Um, I know you're doing Roxy's thing, but I'm really glad that you're doing it. You do, I mean, such beautiful work. And you additioning your fabrics is just, first off, it's amazing to me that you take that much with you when you go away <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> oh, if we ever get to travel in the van, I will take videos of the van and then show you what I can bring because it's a very small RV. And uh, there's not a lot of room. And I would have to choose... I would have to select all of the projects ahead of time and the fabrics that I want to use. And even to like, I don't know, several days ago at the beginning of this, I went downstairs and chose a bunch of fabrics to use. And then I had to go downstairs because that's where I keep everything in our bottom floor. Um, I had to go downstairs and choose some more. And then today I had to go downstairs and choose this pink fabric, the solid. So, I tend to change my mind a lot when I'm working on a project, and that makes it very tricky for me to take a project and say, this is what I'm going to use on it, and then I start the project and I'm not happy with it. It's like, darn, now what? I'm twisting my thread again. Getting to the end of the thread. Now, the tricky part will be, do I want my fly stitch to go upside down, up the other side? Or am I going to... <sighs> I just stabbed myself again. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm not bleeding to death <laughs> over this stuff. <laughs> when I finish... Man, it hurts. And again, that's like the fourth time since I started. Uh uh. You get down there. Okay. I'm pulling that side good. Now, do I want to come up around and have it facing the same direction this way? I think so. Because, mm, let's all say it together Martha has OCD. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. Sunshine. The sun is shining. A little bit. That's all we need. Little bits. Okay. One more. Uh, where's the beginning of my thread? Hello. Where'd you go? <laughs> there it is. Yay. See if I can make it long enough to complete this. Concentration. That might be too long. Don't know. Okay. 
and I have videos to catch up on, so I am behind on many, many videos. So my first stitch going in this direction is right here. It's hard to see. It's right here. But I'm going to overlap that, sort of, kind of, by going like... Now it's thick right there because I have stitches and I have overlapping fabric, so there's like a lot going on. So I'm going to come up there. See how I overlap that? One's going this way and one's going that way. But that's okay. I think I've put these close enough together that even if it gets washed and dried, I don't think it will unravel to the point of coming off. And once I get past this thick over exuberance through this thick part, I can do it like I was doing it on the other side. I won't have to do the stabbing, poking stitch, hopefully. This curve is the tricky part. Turn the work, not your wrist. Oops, a little too close, I think. Even though it's chillier today, a bit cooler, I do have the door open here. Just the slightest breeze coming through for some fresh air. Feels good. You know, you spend months with the doors and windows shut, and it gets to this time of year, end of February. I'm ready for spring. <laughs> I know a lot of other people are way more ready than I am for spring, especially up north. And out west. Heck, even California got snow, so parts of California that don't usually get it. So, yeah. No. Come on. Don't twist. All right. I'm untangling my thread, but or letting it unroll. But I had to do it off to the side because I have so much thread here. Because I overdid it. Now see, in the center of this heart, there would still be room for an embellishment of some sort. Because it's just plain. And because of the stitch I'm doing around it could put seed stitches in there with some finer thread could put another smaller heart in there out of some different fabric a lot of things you can do and I did iron my heart and my this heart and some of the fabric that had fold lines in it I did that before I turned you on to watch lucky you <laughs> I was going to use my I had to buy a new iPad. Mine was older, but I went to get it repaired. And the repair place broke it. So I ended up getting a new 
iPad. And I tried to put it in my holder to video record, which it did fit barely, but I had to put it up higher because the camera zooms in closer on the newer iPad. It's not the newest iPad. It's not an iPad Pro. It's, um, oh gosh, I can't remember if it's a 7 or a 9 now. But anyway, same place. I mean, my phone is down lower. And it still seems far enough away that I'm not blinding you guys by my hand movements. If I am, let me know. But, um... Okay. See, the thread is twisted there. That's why it's giving me a hard time. But, uh... <laughs> uh yeah, so... I was like, no, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So after my videos upload to YouTube, I'm just deleting them off of my phone. Because I should have put that one higher. Because um, I don't want it to use up space. And I don't download them to my computer first. Yep, should have put that V up higher. I don't download them to my computer first. I just use iMovie if I want to add... A photo at the end or I want to splice two videos together or whatever. I'm just using iMovie from my iPhone and if I don't need to show anything at the end then I um, just upload it straight to YouTube. This side's not coming out as pretty as the other side, I feel, came out. Again, my inconsistency with stitches bothers me. Oh, practice makes perfect. I'm trying. It's easier on a straightaway, that's for sure. Curves are hard do this stitch on spacing okay that's coming out all right could be eating yourself up Martha okay I'm going to fold this over it's just easier to hold underneath again. <laughs> I know my fingers are under there. I just keep stabbing them. What happens is I end up stabbing this one a lot. Sometimes this one. Or if I come up, I stab my thumb. So... Oh, <laughs> was not paying attention. <laughs> Oopsies. Mm, funny, funny. I went back to back and looked at YouTube. Uh, what's it called? YouTube st uh, Studio, Bleh. which is for creators. I'm a creator. And looked at the comments section, and there's a ton of comments that never, I never got an email saying that there were comments about. So I have to remember to go back there and keep checking to see if there are comments from current videos now that I'm doing them again. Good thing you can't see me. I had my tongue sticking out on that one. 
<laughs> concentration. And um, I feel bad that I never answered all those older comments on videos that were from junk journaling, but I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not making the journals. I have all of the supplies. I just have absolutely no desire to do them. Um, maybe, and in the future I might pick that up again, but I really don't don't think so. I just love working with fabric. It's quiet. There's no glue smells. The glue smells, the smells from the stamp pads, all that used to bother me a lot. And I'm very sensitive to scent. All of my products, personal products, are unscented. Hand lotion, and shampoo, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Oops. <laughs> totally let go of the needle. Almost done. I hope you're working on something. Should have said it that, that at the beginning. Get a cup of tea or wine. <laughs> whatever your preference is. I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> or coffee. Whatever floats your boat. Pick up a project and do it along with me because I said at the beginning, I don't have a whole lot of interesting stuff to talk about. I didn't work on my other project yesterday. Well, I did in the morning, but I think I showed you what I had done. So yesterday afternoon, I ended up not working on it anymore. But I am planning on working on it today. Come on. Work with me. One more. I'm gonna match it up with that one. Untangle my thread, unspin my thread, whatever you wanna call it. When I find it's harder and harder to pull through the fabric, nope, almost made the same mistake again. When I find it's harder and harder to pull through the fabric, that's when I let the thread unspin. I just hold my work up in the air let the needle dangle and it unspins the thread which always makes it easier there's less re less resistance then yay that turned out better than i thought it was going to <laughs> i surprised myself all right day five i call that good i'm happy with it i like it that in cut it off I think this worked out well with the I'm gonna put a five back here I'm just using a pencil which may rub off with handling but you could use whatever you want especially if the back's gonna be covered trim it up a little Every time I trim it, though, I get a little nervous that the front's going to look shabby. I need a better, better fabric scissors to do this with. Which means I have to bring my good fabric scissors up from downstairs, which means when I need them downstairs, if I'm sewing something, i got to remember to bring them back down with me. Larger blades would be good for this. I don't want all of the hearts to have the uh, pinking sheer edge, so okay, that's good. Don't have to do around there. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry, concentration here. I'm in silent mode. Mode. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, now I'm never going to get all those out of there. So I'll just cover it up with that. <laughs> all right. There's my heart. Day five complete. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below what you're doing. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like. I appreciate it. And I love you all. Bye. Have a great day.